call this meeting to order. It's a uh, special meeting of the town council. Roll call. Town clerk. Thank you. Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, all councilors present except uh, Councilor Antipas. Thank you. Uh, we have a new one. We have a new one. Sue, could you lead us in the uh, salute to the flag? had several proclamations and um, I'm wondering if are they are they list are they here in the original, mm -hmm. your, your original, in the original. I have my papers. Harry you want to read the first one sure <laughs> uh, is it the Girl Scout one it is the heroism of the Savados Girl Scouts oh Bonnie needs to read that one go ahead Bonnie the proclamation honoring the heroism of Girl Scouts Charlotte, Isabella, and Jillian Sabata, whereas the Groton Town Council is pleased to honor and recognize Charlotte, Isabella, and Jillian Sabata for their swift action and bravery while saving their father's life, and whereas on the evening of October 20th, 2016, while their mother was helping their church during the annual turkey supper, the Sabato sisters were playing games with their father and whereas John Sabato suffered a sudden illness, taking leave from the games, he fell to the floor in his room. And whereas in hearing the noise of his fall, the girls ran to his side and began to administer life-saving procedures. And whereas Charlotte, Isabella, and Jillian will each receive a Girl Scout Medal of Honor in recognition of their life-saving efforts in saving their father from a diabetic coma at a ceremony on Monday, June 5th, 2017 at 6 p.m. at Claude Chester Elementary School. Now therefore it be resolved on behalf of the citizens of the town of Groton, the Groton Town Council does hereby honor and congratulate Charlotte, Isabella, and Jillian Sabatas upon their receipt of this prestigious award in Girl Scouting and recognizes their heroic efforts in saving their father's life. Connecticut, uh, Connecticut the fifth, fifth day of June, 2017, signed Mayor Bruce S. Flax, Mayor of the Town of Groton. Thank you, Bonnie. Greg, can you read uh, 0153, the proclamation recognizing Cutler Middle School class of 2017? And I will say that 0154, the recognizing Westside Middle School, is identical except for the number of students. And so we'll, we'll have you read the first one, and Harry read the second one, please. Uh, Cutler Middle School class of 2017, whereas 178 178 grade students at Cutler Middle School have successfully completed educational requirements in order to be promoted. And whereas the class of 2017 has fulfilled Cutler Middle School is a combination of children transferred from all corners of the world and promoted from S.B. Butler, Northeast Academy, Claude Chester, and Catherine Kanowski Elementary Schools. <coughs> and whereas the year of their births marked milestones such as the Euro entering circulation, Apple introducing the iMac 4 and the Human Genome Project is completed. And whereas the class of 2017 is a group of kind, caring, thoughtful young people who look out for each other and their teachers and who actively work to make their school and their community a better place to live. And whereas Cutler Middle School will be honoring the class of 2017 at a promotion ceremony on June 14, 2017 at Fitch High School. Now, fair report be resolved that the Town Council and the Town of Groton hereby congratulate the students of Cutler Middle School, class of 2017, on a job well done and extends their best wishes for their success and happiness in the future. Dated at Groton, Connecticut, this 14th day of June 2017. Sunny, Bruce Yeah, I am um, going to read one for Westside. I'm going to read the whole thing because I think they uh, deserve equal time. Agreed. I will say that um, three short years from now we'll be reading one of these. Mm -hmm. So uh, so this is a proclamation recognizing Westside Middle School class of 2017. Whereas 159 eighth grade students at Westside Middle School have successfully completed educational requirements in order to be promoted. 
and whereas the class of 2017 filled Westside Middle School with a combination of children transferred from all corners of the world and promoted from Mary Morrison, Pleasant Valley, S.B. Butler, Charles Barnum, and Catherine Kolnowski Elementary Schools, and whereas the year of their birth marked milestones, such as the euro entering circulation, Apple introducing the iMac G4, and the Human Genome Project was completed. And whereas the class of 2017 is a group of kind, caring, and thoughtful young people who look out for one another and actively work to make their school and their community a better place. And whereas the West Side Middle School community will honor the class of 2017 at the 61st annual promotion on June 12, 2017 at Fitch Senior High School, now therefore be it resolved that the Town Council of the Town of Groton hereby congratulates the students of West Side Middle School class of 2017 on a good job, on a job well done, uh, and extends best wishes for their success and happiness in the future. And it's stated the 12th of June and signed by our Mayor, uh, Bruce Flax. Thank you, Harry. Rich, can you read the last one, please? There's two more. There's two more? I'm sorry, Rich, will you read Jonathan Fletcher Allen? The proclamation recognizing Jonathan Fletcher Allen, whereas Jonathan Fletcher Allen of Boy Scout Troop 2 in Mystic, Connecticut, began his scouting career as a Bear Cub Scout, completing the requirements for Weblos and earning the Arrow of the Light, the highest award in Cub Scouting. And whereas Jonathan advanced through the ranks of scouting, serving a variety of leadership positions, including assistant patrol leader, patrol leader, assistant senior patrol leader, senior patrol leader, and crew leader at the Philmont Scout Reservation, leading 7th, 11th scouts and adults on a 12-day, 100-mile backpacking expedition through the mountains of New Mexico to the top of Mount Badley. And whereas for his Eagle Scout project, Jonathan built a mobile chicken house and tractor for the Coogan Farm in Mystic, Connecticut to assist with expanding the food donation program to the local food banks. And whereas, having achieved the rank of Eagle Scout, Jonathan will be honored in an Eagle Scout Court of Honor to be held on June 14, 2017. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Council of the Town of Groton, on behalf of the citizens of Groton, does hereby congratulate Jonathan Fletcher Allen for achieving the rank of Eagle Scout, the highest rank in Boy Scouting, and extends wishes for his continual su success, dated at Groton, Connecticut, this 14th day of June, 2017, by Mayor Bruce S. Flax. Thank you, Rich. Deb, can you read the proclamation recognizing John Mears? Sure. Uh, whereas John Mears of Boy Scout Troop 2 in Mystic, Connecticut, began his scouting career with Pac 34's Tiger Den at S.B. Butler School, working hard over the years to live up to the organization standards for Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts. And whereas John advanced through the ranks of scouting, serving a variety of leadership positions, including assistant patrol leader, patrol leader, assistant senior patrol leader, assistant crew leader at Philmont Scout Reservation, where he led numbers of members of the crew on a 12-day, 100-mile backpacking expedition through the mountains of New Mexico to the top of the Mount Baldy. And whereas for his Eagle Scout project, John remodeled the outside deck for the Forgotten Angels Cat Sanctuary in Griswold, Connecticut, and built five birdhouses for the cats to watch. <laughs> whereas having achieved the rank of Eagle Scout, John would be honored in an Eagle Scout Court of Honor to be held on June 14, 2017. Now therefore be it resolved that the Town Council of the Town of Groton, on behalf of the citizens of Groton, does hereby congratulate John Mears for achieving the rank of Eagle Scout, the highest rank of Boy Scouting, and extends wishes for his continued success, dated at Groton, Connecticut, this 14th day of June 17th, by our Mayor, Bruce Flax. So moved. Oh, Thank you. Moved. Not moved. I do Sorry. want to say that, um, <laughs> Our town clerk um, put these together in a very short period of time. The request came in very late, and it's very nice that we um, that you can respond like that and get that out there and hand deliver them. Um, so I think that the people, you know, it was very nice of you to do that. So thank my you. Ple my pleasure, and I hope you don't mind my humor. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't help myself. That was funny. So um, the next item is uh, 2017-049, a recess for a public hearing on an ordinate, ordinance to designate the Planning Commission, the Planning and Zoning Commission, and to abolish the Zoning Commission. And Betsy, do you want to read? Uh, yes, I will. 
Notice is hereby given that a public hearing will be held by the Groton Town Council, Town of Groton, Connecticut, on June 20th, 2017 at 7.30 p.m. at Community Room 1, Town Hall Annex, 134 Groton Long Point Road, uh, Groton, Connecticut, on the ordinance introduced at the Town Council meeting held on June 6, 2017, entitled Summary of Publication of an Ordinance to Designate Planning and Zoning as a Combined Planning and Zoning Commission. Said ordinance would designate the Planning Commission to be a Combined Planning and Zoning Commission with its regular and alternate members to be appointed and vacancies filled by the Town Council. Increase the size of the resulting commission from five to seven regular members, provide for the power and the uh, seating of alternate members and abolish the existing zoning commission. The full ordinance is available at the Town of Groton <coughs> website and at the Town Clerk's Office, dated Groton, Connecticut, the 15th day of June, 2017. Thank okay. you very much. So uh, we'll open the public hearing. We have uh, <clears throat> six people who signed up, and of course, if anybody's here who'd like to speak after that, they're welcome to. The first person um, to sign up. Oh, yeah, Mark. Uh, our planning director, John Reiner, is here. Maybe just to give oh, a sure. kind of I'm a sorry. brief I'm sorry, overview. John. <laughs> and Deb. And Deb. I'm and sorry. Deb. Good evening. John Reiner, director of planning and development. Uh, we did submit a, a short memo kind of outlining some of the background of the Planning and Zoning Commission, the roles and responsibilities that they do, and the one thing that we do want to consider through this process and in what steps that we take is uh, although the market analysis, the regulatory audit did recommend us consolidating our boards and commissions after we study it, look at it, and see how that's going to impact us over time, how is that also going to change the workload that our commissions currently have? And uh, one of the things that I've, I've tried to be cautious with, uh, even when this report first came out of, yeah, I think a lot of people are in favor of uh, consolidating, combining, streamlining our process, but we're also at the same time asking a lot of our boards and commissions with rewriting our regulations. Do we've you know taken our first step in the, the rewriting the zoning regulations. So I think the one thing we want to also consider is we've had trouble recruiting people to stay on boards and commissions, getting them on boards and commissions, and then the workload that we're going to be putting on them, doing the normal work of reviewing site plans and applications, and trying to rewrite the regulations at the same time. So I think that's something you're going to hear about. Um, I think you actually did receive some correspondence from some planning commission members about that. So, um, wasn't sure if there are any questions about the memo that we put together, um, any of the information in there? That's it. Okay. All right. All right. That's all I had to say for Thank tonight. You Thank much. you very much. So, the first person who signed up to speak is Jeff Pritchard. If you could come to the lectern and state your address, that would be fabulous. Thank you. Jeff Richard, 31 West Mystic Avenue, Mystic. Uh, I'd like to read a letter uh, written by the Planning Commission addressing the proposed uh, ordinance. Jeff, can you talk into the microphone oh, a little I'm bit? Oh, I'm sorry, better? you can't hear Thank me. Thank you. <laughs> the Planning Commission has reviewed the expected impacts resulting from implementation of the proposed ordinance to combine the planning and zoning commissions for the town of Groton and has concluded that this change has a high probability of having a negative impact on economic development within the town. The proposed change will not eliminate any new project reviews or streamline the review process from initial submittal to approval. Application reviews are subject to state statute requirements for action time limits and referrals. Simplifying the re review process will require revising the zoning regulations. This project currently underway by the Zoning Commission is estimated to take 18 months to complete. The estimate to complete the project by another commission expected to concurrently conduct existing business would be considerably longer. Forming a combined planning and zoning commission with the current and projected workload is expected to increase the frequency of meetings above the normal two meetings a month, which would cause resignation of commissioners due to conflicts with personal life requirements. Volunteers for town government positions are hard to replace in the current environment. Also increasing the commission from five to seven members will increase the time for debate since additional discussions will occur without necessarily 
identifying new views. Increasing the commission prescribed membership size without additional members increases the risk of not having a quorum and thus the inability to conduct business. Designated two regular commission members with terms expiring on December 2021 will result in three regular commissioners with the same expiration date since currently one of the regular members and one alternate member have the same end date for their appointment. This situation does not support an orderly replacement of new members of the Town Commission. It is a consensus of the Planning Commission to recommend that action on the ordinance to form a combined Town of Groton Planning and Zoning Commission be postponed until after the revision to the existing zoning regulations is complete and a detailed study of the town approval process for development applications is conducted. <coughs> Thank you, Jeff. Next on the list is Richard Fitzgerald. First of all, I have received a letter and reviewed the oh, Richard, um, can you give, can you Richard Fitzgerald, 8 Benjamin Road, Mr. Thank Connecticut. Uh, I have received the uh, original draft that Jeff Richard wrote, and it's basically it's the same. Uh, and my comments were on two or three of the items in in the uh, that I just wanted to enlarge on. I wrote a letter to uh, the mayor of Groton, uh, Flax, and also I should have said to the town council. Okay, here it goes. It's, uh, this is on the Groton Zoning and Planning Commission combination. That is the subject. I currently uh, am on the, on the Planning Commission. I agree with the logic and conclusions of Jeff Pritchard's letter to the Town Council of 6 -19 One of my biggest concerns is the zoning regulation revision project of the Zoning Commission. It <clears throat> had been started in 2015 and has completed the WRPD Water Resource Project District portion of it. Still to go is a streamlining of the process of the zoning regulations. It has been projected that it will take a minimum of 18 months if not longer, of the current zoning uh, commission. That's my estimate, and that's what I've heard. A new commission would have many meetings to review the material already presented and the inputs of consultants. A lot of the work previously completed in the past two years on certain parts of the new regulation would be started from scratch. This would cause delays in issuing a new zoning regulation probably well beyond the 15 months, 18 months projected. And that is my opinion. Also, the meetings would increase. Currently, the Planning Commission is meeting twice a month plus special meetings. That's 24 plus 10, or up to 34 meetings uh, a year. With the combined zoning commission meetings and the responsibilities of the zoning commission, this would increase the meetings at least 50% to 100% for the first one or two years. And I would say initially probably 100%. And this would require longer meetings than the initial ones from either commission as they stand now. The workload would definitely increase. I agree with uh, Jeff Pritchard that the combination planning and zoning commission, if this is to be done at all, should be after 
the new zoning regulations are complete. And that's my, that's my opinion. Thank you, Richard. Next is, I hope I get this right, Eugenia Villagra? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just be reading a, a letter that a group of 10 people, 11 people actually put together uh, we started working on this. We, a, a number of us have been coming, uh, have been attending the zoning commission meetings. Eugenia, can you just to say the, your address too, please? Oh, sorry. No yeah, problem. my name's Eugenia Villagra, and my address is 76 Riverview Avenue in Groton. Thank you. Um, so a, a bunch of us have been coming to these meetings uh, to hear about uh, what the zoning commission would be doing pertaining to the uh, WRPD. And so that group of people uh, has, uh, I would, would like to uh, respond to this uh, for this public hearing. Uh, the, the Groton Zoning Commission, after resisting harsh external pressure, has completed a complex and scientifically sound update of regulations that safeguard our invaluable reservoir system in the Water Resource Protection District, the WRPD. During months of arduous research, the commission and planning staff listened carefully not only to guardians of our drinking water, but also to business people. The commission ensured that hardship protection for business people and property owners was built into the new regulations. In fact, the impact of the regulation changes is far smaller than might be imagined. The suddenness, acrimony, and obvious eagerness of the town council to disband this dedicated and expert group of zoning volunteers was disappointing and will be hard to forget. We believe the council misread both intentions and actions of the commission in their work to revise the WRPD regulations. The question now is where the town goes from here. A 2016 audit suggested that the town study the possibility of combining planning and zoning. That study was bypassed by the council in its rush to eliminate the commission. But let's assume that Groton can create an effective combined planning and zoning commission and that this arrangement could reduce the number of commission visits that developers would need to make before breaking ground. It didn't work when tried in 1956 to 58, but maybe it could work now despite the heavy workload it would place on commissioners. If the council's decision is to create a joint planning and zoning commission, it would make sense to integrate the two units gradually first allowing zoning to complete its major task of amending the regulations so that the expenditures made and the work done to date by the commission, staff, and consultants are not wasted. During this period, sitting volunteers on both panels could be brought up to speed on the new half of the merged unit, a smoothly accelerating merger that makes maximum use of current commissioners could avoid a serious organizational jam up that would defeat the goal of streamlining the process. Under the merger, unless the merger occurs in a well-planned set of steps, prospective applicants will find themselves frustrated as they try to get their projects through a new unit that is ill-prepared because of its expanded responsibilities. Is there an additional opportunity here? Would it be wise to use this occasion to think about some careful and limited consolidation of zoning regulations affecting both the town and the city of Groton? Just a thought. Our advice would be to set up a clear, realistic timeline to complete the regulation amendments and systematically merge the two commissions. Set a date for completion integration nine to 12 months from now with a possible and earlier ending if the work is done and the unified planning and zoning commission is on track to streamline the regulatory process and protect the town's quality of life. Under this plan, the zoning commission would remain in existence until it's time to merge the two units. Something good, a solid legacy both of this 30th Town Council and the Zoning Commission can come out of this currently divisive situation, but for that to happen, the Council will need to take a positive and orderly approach. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Doug Smith. Can you please state your address, Doug. Hi, my name is Doug Smith, 37 Island Circle South, Groton. I'm currently a member of the Zoning Commission. I've been on the Commission for about three and a half years. 
Um, first of all, I would like to um, endorse and agree with the written and uh, oral statements of Mr. Pritchard, and also the oral and statements and the uh, memo written by John Reiner and Deb Jones concerning this uh, combination. In my three and a half years on the Zoning Commission, I cannot recall a single incident when the Zoning Commission turned down a request for a special permit. Um, and most of those special permit applications would not be though, uh, an, uh, something that would in turn go to the Planning Commission so that a combination of the two would not result in any particular um, streamlining of the process. The Zoning Commission currently has a membership that in my view is both diverse um, in skills, experiences, and educational background. And with the recent rewriting of the WRPD regulations, which was completed on the 31st of May, I believe that the Commission had come together and become both an efficient and a uh, um, cohesive body that served the town well. At that point, after we had approved those regulations, I had a feeling that we were prepared to go forward and attack the um, rewriting of the zoning regulations in an orderly and, and I think faster manner than we were able to do the WRPD regulations because we had gotten together, had worked with the consultants to a great degree, and were, I think, resolved to get this uh, um, rewrite done. Okay. There's also, though, at that particular moment, that your um, ordinance was presented to the commission, totally out of the blue. Um, no one ever came to the commission and said, what do you think about uh, um, combining the two commissions. You didn't ask anybody's opinion at all. You just, this was just presented to us. It was gonna go to a Committee of the Whole on the 6th of June, and then it was gonna go to this public hearing on the 20th of June. So needless to say, that particular moment, right after we had completed the WRPD regulations, to see this uh, presented to us, it was a deflating moment. I don't know, to me personally, I don't know to the other members, but I think it was a deflating moment. We had a, a commission that had a fairly high morale and was working together pretty well, but after that, I don't know whether we would or would not have that. In any event, you held a joint meeting with the Zoning Commission on March 21st, and you never mentioned any possibility of this. You had an opportunity to do so and did not do it. To my knowledge, you never went to the Planning Commission and asked their opinion of this. You just presented this ordinance as what appears to me to be a, 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 a done deal, as far as I can tell. So I guess in closing, all I can say is I, to me, this, the way this is, was done was disrespectful to all of the members of the Planning Commission and all the members of the Zoning Commission, and particularly some of the long-serving members, including Steve Hudicek and our commission, who served the town faithfully for over 25 years. You didn't seek any um, opinion from him. You just started with this ordinance and moved it forward. So to me, it's just disappointing the way this is, uh, has proceeded and you can vote the way you want. Thank you. Tom Tobin. Good evening, my name is Tom Tobin. I live at 104 Irving Street uh, here in Groton. 
and I wanted to add some remarks with respect to the proposal to uh, ab abolish the uh, Town Zoning Commission. Um, I was a bit of a latecomer to the hearings with respect to the WRPD, but read uh, all of the research provided by the town's expert and read all of the um, uh, offerings by various um, um, uh, experts and town citizens. And in my opinion, the proposal appears to be pretty wrong-headed and hasty. On the one hand, to, uh, to take from a group of experienced volunteers in the area of zoning uh, and uh, abolish or fire them um, seems to make no sense. And at the same time, to transfer that responsibility and task to a group of people who have no zoning experience also volunteers, seems to compound the error. In my opinion, the, um, the um, council should either abandon this, what appears to be a vindictive plan, and at least study the idea more carefully. From my uh, perspective, it appears that the town council uh, perceives the zoning commission as being anti-business. Um, inimical to the uh, business reputation of the community. However, the uh, evidence appears entirely different. Uh, the fact appears to be that the Zoning Commission has only turned down one application in the course of the tenure of the current chair. One has to wonder uh, what impact on the reputation would be a Flint, Michigan-like kind of water event and the town council should keep in mind that those officials in Flint are facing numerous um, class action um, actions against them, uh, carrying some, or at least alleging, some personal liability. In, in my uh, view, after attending all of the meetings relating to the WRPD, it appeared to me that the Zoning Commission uh, applied a very, very even-handed approach. It's not a matter of snail huggers or tree huggers. It's a matter of our water, the water we drink, the water we feed to our children. We can't, we can't simply ignore that. We can't attribute it to a, an anti-business uh, attitude. We know there are people out there who don't make the connections between uh, chemical runoff, illness, and the water supply. But those connections are very real, as evidenced by Flint, Michigan. Um, it seems to me that we should uh, uh, ask the town council to carefully reconsider the proposal to abolish the zoning commission. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Sue Sutherland? My name is Sue Sutherland, and I live at 32 Neptune Drive in Groton. <clears throat> I've had the honor <coughs> to serve on the Zoning Commission for many years, first as an alternate, and then as a full commissioner, and most recently as chairperson. When I first started, Steve Hudicek and Susan Markhart were on the commission, each with a long tenure. Steve has served, as was said before, over 25 years now, and I think Susan is rapidly catching up with him. Um, I'm very proud of the Zoning Commission you appointed. We are from diverse backgrounds, well-balanced in our points of view, and collaborative. If you had the time to attend more meetings or listen to recordings of the Zoning Commission, you would hear five very independent commissioners trying to reach the best solution for all parties. We hear from business people, other residents, people with complaints, in some, the diversity that is grotten as we try to figure out solutions to zoning issues within our regulation constraints. 
Tonight, you're holding a public hearing regarding the com combined the planning and zoning commissions. I wish you well in the project, but would recommend you carefully consider the planning commission's cautionary letter of June 19th, 2017. The planning commission is also very experienced, knowledgeable, and conscientious commission, and their many concerns should be thoughtfully reviewed. As said in the letter from the planning commission, the Zoning Commission is in the final stages of updating the zoning regulations. The most efficient course of action and that which could avoid the likely negative impact on economic development in Groton would be to allow the Zoning Commission to complete this project. It will simplify and clarify zoning regulations for everyone. In addition, consolidating to one planning and zoning commission while sounding like a no-brainer in the consultant's report, may in fact result in Groton becoming even more inefficient and difficult to do business with. Due to state statute requirements, combining planning and zoning will not streamline the process as we must work within the same concurrent time limit. What is more of an issue is that a larger commission with a bigger workload will result in much more time required and will be discouraging to volunteers. Jeff Pritchard, Chairman of the Planning Commission, and I both like to make sure each commissioner has one or more chances to speak on each issue, and then we try to reach a consensus. Increasing from five to seven commissioners is just ensuring inefficiency. If you decide to combine the two commissions, having spent time with the Planning Commission to study and confirm this is a good idea, I would strongly recommend you keep the number of full commissioners at five. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Sue. Is there anybody else who would like to speak at this public hearing? Yes. Okay. Hold on, Hank. Hold on one sec, we're good, we're good. Yeah. I'm Susan Bailey. I'm the chairman of the Groton Business Association. Would you like my address too? Please. 123 Monument Street. I would like to encourage the council to support the ordinance to combine planning and zoning commissions. As part of the town of Groton's efforts to encourage new economic development, the town OPDS functions with a high awareness of the balance needed between businesses, business development, residential projects, and ecological factors in order to meet the quality of life component required to propel our community forward to a vibrant and financially secure future for all residents. We encourage, if the, if the commissions are combined, we encourage current commission members to participate, to continue to participate in a combined commission continuing to use their expertise to promote decisions in the expedited manner today's world requires. We support the ordinance to combine the town's planning and zoning commissions, and we encourage you to support it also. Thank you. Thank you. Hank? I'm Hank Steinford. I live at 32 Valley Road here in Groton, and I'm a member of the Planning Commission approximately 20 years now, and I have served on a number of land use commissions throughout my time here in Groton, uh, starting with the uh, Conservation Commission, the uh, Inland Wetlands Agency, which I was uh, chairman of, I even sat on the board up here where you're at. My one concern is, I, or I should say, the first thing is that I do agree with Jeff Pritchard's letter. We, we discussed this thoroughly at our last meeting. But the one thing that I really want to point out is that uh, the length of these meetings are going to be almost prohibitive. Uh, Right now, since the recession, we have a very low workload. There's not that much happening. 
but there was a time, and I hope there will be another time, when we have long meetings, and I'm talking about one o'clock in the morning. Several times we've gone through that length of uh, meetings, and repeatedly, three of them in a row. So you need to look at this because you're not going to keep people on these commissions for any length of time. They're going to burn out, and the result will be they will not function well. Thank you. Thank you, Hank. Anybody else like to speak? Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Victor Villagra, and uh, I live at uh, 76 Riverview Avenue, Noink. Um, I am very troubled by the rush and the absence of sufficient information, public documents informing the public of the critical analysis that led to the proposal to fuse the two zoning commissions. In particular, um, I would be interested, uh, I, I, I read, the, I read the, the ordinance proposal, and uh, if it is, uh, if it is uh, the fact that the, one of the justifications, at least the one uh, you cite, is uh, saving money, uh, how much money will be saved? What will the cost be to taxpayers and businesses uh, downstream of this decision due to delays in the processing of requests for uh, special permits, as has been uh, mentioned by others. What is the price to taxpayers and the business community for the loss of experience and technical expertise of the members of the Zoning Commission? What is the consequence and the cost to taxpayers of the truncation and the interruption of the orderly and systematic uh, approach that has been developed by the Zoning Commission to review the zoning regulations and uh, currently on their way. It does not require more than a modicum of common sense to realize that answers to these questions are extremely important, relevant to the rush action likely to have long-term consequences because we're proposing five-year terms for uh, members of a new joint commission. Third-party independent auditors have recommended a study to answer some of my questions, and we are, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I find that uh, a very sensible recommendation. Uh, but I think it's fair to ask, uh, and I don't know the answer to this, uh, is the study itself uh, prohibitively costly to the town? How much will it cost? Uh, how much will they consolidate it commission actually say? Does, does anybody have an answer to that immediate question to the justification that you propose for uh, such a drastic action? For the sake of transparency and accountability to uh, residents of uh, Groton and taxpayers and for prudent decision making, I urge you not to approve the proposed ordinance and instead to follow a sensible recommendation from the independent auditor uh, for a study to inform this important decision. There is no rush, ladies and gentlemen, that anybody can see or that appears justified by, frankly, mostly the lack of facts and sufficient clarity about what is all behind this decision. Thank you very much. Victor, can you give me your last name again? I'm sorry. Say that again. Your last name? Villagra, V-I-L-L-A-G-R-A. -L -L Thank you. Thank you, sir. Would anybody else like to speak? Okay. Then we will close this public hearing and we will move on uh, to receipts of citizens' petitions, comments, and concerns. This is the portion of the council agenda where the council welcomes comments from citizens. Each presentation should be limited to five minutes or less, and citizens should, if possible, submit written comments. Presentations should be related to matters pertinent to Groton. Town councilors will only ask questions in order to clarify the speaker's presentation and can respond during the response to citizens' petition portion of the town council meeting. 
citizens should make their presentations from the lectern and state their name. Um, we do have several people signed up, but I'm not sure any of them are still here. Uh, so I will start reading through them, and if you're here, just raise your hand. Uh, Bradford King, Tom Althuis, Altice. Altice, thank you. Stephen Christina Jr., Mitch Marin, Joe Zapiri, Fran Snyder Zagola. Uh, I know Jimmy Streeter's not here. I know Ed McCausher's not here. Terry Eames, no. Leanne Obrey, no. Richard Palmieri, Steve Gardner, and Steve Garman. Okay. And we'll put that aside. Yep. Would anybody like to speak for public comment? Okay. Um, would someone like to move the consent calendar? I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second to move the consent calendar. Any further discussion? Seeing that all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes eight to zero to zero. Communications? Council Marasic? I have nothing to report. Council Noll? I can't think what. I did do some stuff. You got a lot of emails. Yes. <laughs> I did get a lot of emails. Yes. A lot of phone calls. Okay. Greg? A lot of emails, a lot of phone calls. Yes. Harry? Um, same. Deb? Same. Bonnie? I mean, Diane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Diane? Same, Harry. <laughs> Touche. Um, I can't even think either. I've met with Mark a couple of times, and uh, you're playing with me now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I also got a lot of letters and uh, a lot of uh, correspondence on Facebook, and um, that, that's taken up all my time. So, um, clerk at the representative town meeting. Yes, Mayor, the clerk uh, met, um, clerk, the RTM met on June 4th at 7.30 at the Groton Senior Sub Center, and they uh, passed the fourth quarter transfers that were on their agenda, and they also discussed um, the uh, ordinance uh, for, uh, that will be, um, if the town council passes the ordinance, uh, that will be referred to the RTM uh, <coughs> regarding uh, the planning and zoning com okay. combination. And they also discussed uh, putting together a group to discuss budget this summer okay. uh, for the 2019 budget. Very good. There Thank you have you. it. Clerk of the Council. Uh, received a lot of emails and phone calls regarding uh, this meeting. Um, and uh, unfortunately, I gave them misinformation. I thought because it was a special meeting, there wouldn't be any citizens' petitions. Yeah, we changed it because we felt people that, wanted to be heard. That was wise. Heard. Very yeah. wise. So, so, uh, so there are a few people. There was probably four people that called, but you certainly had a great representation here of, uh, of the people that were concerned. We sure did. And uh, since the last meeting was not televised, I will just say before I go to the town manager that the par four lease was voted upon to extend for an additional five and a half years. Oh, that's great to know. Um, thank you for telling me that. I also wanted to bring to your attention again the 4th of July parade, which I had a lot of responses. So uh, you should have received your packet by email today with the uh, parking instructions. And you want to park at the, uh, at the Groton Shopping Plaza and take the shuttle bus in. Mm -hmm. And uh, happy to note that um, the parade route is starting at Aquatic Plains Park and continuing along Fort Hill and uh, all the way so down. So it's the uh, standard parade the route standard that was parade? used yeah. the last year, so for those. Uh, uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Last year's was shortened. Right, two years ago, I mean, we skipped a year. So right. for those watching at home and are concerned about the 4th of July parade, the route is back to the standard route that was used two years ago and skipped over last year. It will start at Aquatic Plains and go to the uh, Benny's Plaza. Mm -hmm. Last thing is uh, we're still registering dogs uh, for the month of June. Uh, if you uh, are tardy after the month of June, it's a dollar assessment every month. Please bring your uh, current rabies for your dog that's six months or older. And if they've been spayed or neutered, it's an $8 fee uh, for altered and 19 for unaltered. Thank you. You're welcome. Mark? Just a, a couple of things. Um, as we discussed prior to the meeting, 
Um, it would be good if the council could have a discussion uh, before you leave tonight about are we meeting next Tuesday or not. It's my understanding at least two counselors won't be here for a portion of the meeting. And for some reason, I think there may be a third counselor that won't be here for the meeting at all. But I, I just need to know. So uh, I know Greg and I have a, uh, a meeting to go to that's not here. And we probably wouldn't get back here until 730. Deb? I am not here. Okay. Council Morton, are you here? I am. Council Barber? Yeah, but I vote not to be here. Okay. <laughs> Council Watson? Um, I don't care to be here. Okay. Greg, we know you. Yes. Bonnie? I'm here. Right I'm here. here. Okay. So, the uh, Mark, you want to talk about the agenda for that day and just see if we want to, you know, because if we don't meet um, next Tuesday, the next available regular meeting would be the 11th. The 11th. Which is Mark's last night. Um, <laughs> and uh, we have, really haven't gone with a bang. Um, but, uh, Unless we had a special meeting at some other And the new manager's first night. That's right. So. That's right. Um, well. Um, we shouldn't make a meeting that goes till midnight <laughs> for his first meeting. <laughs> Break I'll him in hard. Do that to him. I want to make sure he stays. Um, well, a couple things. Um, just to explain the, the next, um, if you don't meet next week, the 11th of July is the next regular meeting. And, and because Tuesday the 4th is, is a holiday. And so the meeting on the 11th at this point would be your regular town council meeting. And the way you adopted the schedule is what would have been normally your cow meeting would be the infamous third Tuesday that you have indicated you, you didn't want to meet on, but we've met every mm -hmm. third Tuesday since you made that decision, including tonight. Um, so on the 11th, while that would be a regular town council meeting, the agenda you have in front of you tonight pretty much captures all the things you approved at your last count. So the, reg the council meeting on the 11th, your regular council meeting on the 11th, should be fairly light, um, you know, unless there's citizens' petitions or whatever. There won't be, I don't think, any action items. Do we have um, any other leases to extend? I'm sorry? <laughs> well, we're hopefully going to do that yeah. uh, tonight. We do have a placeholder on the agenda. It was a joke. So if you, if you didn't want to meet on the 27th, you could if you wanted to. I'm not encouraging mm -hmm. you, but if you wanted to, you could also schedule a special cow that night, maybe at okay. 6 o'clock. Um, the items that we had tentatively identified to put on uh, next Tuesday's cow agenda, um, you know, with the non-union terms and conditions or certain aspects of that, we've, we've done a, um, updated the pay plan. I know at least one of you have asked uh, about that, um, whether or not you want to give any uh, annual increases to the non-union folks. Uh, health uh, insurance. I don't know that we're going to have time necessarily to get into retirement uh, that evening. But my concern, and I mentioned it to the mayor, is I, those are things I would like, I would suggest all of you be in attendance mm -hmm. at, not have two or three or four of you uh, not there because we've, particularly for retirement, we've, we've talked about it like on three different occasions over the last couple of years. Um, we also did get word uh, after our last discussion uh, or after our last meeting that Senator Groton would like Senator Groton Fire District would like to come in, um, and I, I did mention to the mayor maybe having a discussion about you have a number of standing referrals for joint meetings, um, and you know with the city, the Board of Ed, Groton Long Point, state legislators, um, and also Stoning the Board of Selectmen question is do you want to try to establish some regular meeting schedules mm -hmm. as opposed to waiting until a hot butt button item comes up um, you also uh, as a reason you have the uh, later on this evening you have uh, a resolution basically appointing the committee of the whole as the, the tax abatement committee uh, so if you did approve that later on this evening we were going to put on there the request for tax abatement the application and the staff referral. Um, and then obviously you have uh, consideration of the public comments that you received tonight on planning and zoning. 
you know, I, I think it's fair to say, you know, all of those could probably wait if you didn't want to meet on the 27th. Um, and if you can't all be here on the 27th, I, I would be a little concerned about starting to go down, you know, starting to do some of the non-union terms and conditions without a full mm -hmm. contingent here. So I think it sounds like we uh, want to have no meeting and we'll have a regular cow on the, on the 11th. Be a special cow. Special cow on the 11th um, and, a, and a regular council meeting, which should be pretty short. Correct. All right, so we'll have no meeting next week. I, I did on the calendar, I did forget something important I went to. I went to that 50th anniversary party for Avery Point. Oh, nice. And it was very, very nice. It was a lovely, lovely event. And congratulations to Avery Point. Nice. Thank you. Great. So what time did we decide on a special cow? Six. He's six. Six. Does that work for everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. What date is that? It's on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday one. Yeah, I'm sorry. And the only other items I did want to note, I'm sorry. Uh, we did put in the weekly status report that we have finished uh, the LED light conversion uh, for GMTV. Um, Sean and Shane are very happy with the results, and I, I do want to give a call out uh, for uh, Grot Utilities who provided the funding through the Neighborhood Assistance Act. I, I really would encourage the council, we've had discussions at staff level, that this is a fantastic program. Uh, applications are pretty simple. Our, our challenge is, is to identify businesses that are willing to participate uh, in the program. Thankfully, Groton Utilities has been willing uh, in the last couple of years to participate. Uh, but there are many other businesses in the community that are, are eligible to participate, but I, we're having some difficulty convincing them to participate because it's, it is different. Um, basically, instead of sending a check to Hartford, you can make a commitment uh, to provide funding to this program. It's dollar for dollar if it's an energy efficiency related type of project. I mean, it's, it's as, as close to free money as you can get. Um, it doesn't cost the business anything. I think from our recent experience, part of the problem is, is while we are reaching out to some of the businesses, we probably need to also reach out to their accountants because they're the ones that apparently are really calling the shots on, on how the tax returns are, are completely filled out and so forth. So it is different. It sounds almost too good to be true. Uh, there are a number of other tax credit programs, uh, one in particular concerning housing that I'm very familiar with. We had the same issues there, trying to convince people that no, it's okay to participate in this. Um, so I won't be around to promote the program, but I do. Th we have gotten some very nice projects done the last couple of years um, and um, I know our staff is, is geared up to come up with ideas moving forward. Um, also, I, I, we did receive uh, some very good news um, concerning the, uh, from the Connecticut Port Authority concerning mm -hmm. an application yeah. that town very staff good. put together um, on behalf uh, of uh, uh, the Thames River Heritage Park Committee. A uh, $730,000 grant uh, that would provide funding for the uh, modification of the existing Nautilus dock uh, awesome. in a way so that we could facilitate the docking of a uh, water taxi. Um, so uh, thanks go out to Planning and Development and Public Works uh, who worked on that. And then lastly, I just want to remind everybody this Thursday on June 22nd, Planning and Development is conducting a public information meeting concerning the Mystic Edge Center. Uh, it's at seven, it at, begins at 5.30 uh, at the Town Hall Annex in this room. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, personal appointment, Chairman Watson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just gonna summarize our minutes from June 6th because all the people that we uh, voted to uh, appoint or recommend for appointment are in our agenda tonight. Uh, we did meet on the 6th. We approved our minutes from May, and we uh, recommended the appointment of the six folks that are in our agenda tonight. We have promised to work on our appointment policy in August. We're not going to be meeting in July because of what Mark was just talking about. 
and we adjourned at 625. How's that? Thank Quick. you, sir. Quick. Uh, Chairman Antipas is not here. Committee of the Whole has met uh, several times, several items, of which several are on the agenda as new business tonight. The first one being 2017-0150, Property Tax Abatement Committee. Councillor Diane Barber, can you please read? I got both the first and the last name correct. I know, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> property Tax Abatement Committee. Resolution establishing a Property Tax Abatement Committee for the abatement of taxes for persons who are poor and unable to pay, whereas on February 5, 2002, Resolution 2001-0228 2000 was adopted, which provides for a means for the abatement of taxes for persons who are poor and unable to pay per CGS 12-124, and whereas CGS 12-124 requires that abatement of such taxes be approved slash denied by a standing <coughs> abatement committee, and whereas the Town of Groton does not currently have an abatement committee as required by CGS 12-124, now therefore be it resolved that the Groton Town Council designates the Town Council Committee of the Whole as the Property Tax Abatement Committee to review and approve slash deny the abatement of taxes for persons who are poor and unable to pay. I so move. Second. We have a motion by Councillor Barber, a second by Councillor Brasic. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes eight to zero to zero. Councilor Morton, can you do the Noank Aquaculture Lease Renewal? Certainly. 2017-0151, resolution authorizing the renewal of the lease of town property to the Noank Aquaculture Cooperative Corporation, whereas the original 10-year lease of town-owned property at 100 Main Street in Noank to the Noank Aquaculture Co Co <laughs> Cooperation Corporation expired on January 31st, 2017, and whereas James Mar Markow, president of the cooperative, notified the town of his desire to renew the lease for an additional five-year term, and whereas the town council has reviewed a draft lease renewal that includes rent and shellfish seed fee increases in accordance with the renewal options outlined in the original lease, now therefore be it resolved that the town manager is duly authorized to execute a five-year lease renewal of the property at 100 Main Street, Noank, with the Noank Aquaculture Cooperative Corporation. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there <coughs> any further discussion? You Just, a, um, thank you for not asking me to read that one. <laughs> the, Mary? the first corporation should be cooperative. Cooperation, it says, it should, that it should be cooperative. cooperative. That's just a typo. What's that? I'm good at fixing these things. Okay. Thanks, Harry. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes 8 to 0 to 0. Council Morasic, can you do 0155, please? <coughs> 2017 Resolution approving revised job description for the Librarian 1 circulation and Librarian 1 public services. Whereas the job descriptions for the Librarian 1 Circulation and Librarian 1 Public Services were approved in 2015, and whereas the positions have been implemented over the past two years, the need to refine the educational and experience requirements has become evident. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Town Council approves the attached job description for Librarian 1 Circulation and Librarian 1 Public Services. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? That passes 8 to 0 to 0. Councilor Noll? Yes, Mayor. 2017-0156, uh, a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to purchase commodities from joint purchasing programs without conducting the bid process, whereas the town of Groton has for many years purchased commodities from vendors on the state contract list pursuant to the contracts awarded by the state to those vendors without conducting the bid process and whereas the town has derived great benefit from making said purchases without conducting its own bid process in terms of price and efficiency resulting in savings 
of money and time in acquiring goods required by various town departments to perform their functions, and whereas by expanding the purchase of commodities to include other joint purchasing programs such as Regional Council of Governments, Connecticut Conference of Municip New Municipalities, Connecticut Association of Boards of Education, or any other public agency, including a municipality or municipalities or other nonprofit organization, the members of which are public bodies, now therefore it be resolved that the purchasing agent is authorized to purchase commodities from other joint purchasing programs without conducting the town bid process when to do so would result in cost savings to the town. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? That passes 8 to 0 to 0. Councilor Grimm, you do 2017-0158. Uh, uh, certainly. Resolution to endorse the Economic Development Logo Brand Identity Committee selections. Whereas the Office of Planning and Development Services is actively working to build a strong and healthy business community through numerous initiatives, including marketing and the creation of a standalone economic development website. And whereas the Town of Brown has completed a townwide market analysis, which includes a recommendation that the website refrain from using the town seal for digital marketing and instead develop a modern, recognizable logo that will help strengthen the town's brand identity. And whereas in accordance with the prior town council approval, the Office of Planning and Development Services initiated and partnered with the Groton Business Association to help facilitate a logo competition open to the general public. And whereas the contest was successfully completed with the review of 30 submittals was conducted by an OPDS GBA committee that developed a short list group of finalists. And whereas two finalists were ultimately selected by the committee who are also being recommended for final endorsement and award by the town council, including the allocation of $250 for the first place selection for the logo and a flight lesson to be awarded to the second place finalist for the slogan. And whereas the two winning selections will be further refined and later used in ways to best represent Groton's future brand for marketing and serve the promotional needs of the town of Groton. Now therefore be resolved that the town council hereby endorses the preferred logo and slogan from the economic development logo brand identity competition as identified by the Office of Planning and Development Services and the Groton Business Association Committee. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I know that um, John showed the logo last week and said there'd be a few refinements to it, but it's exciting that we're going to be, um, we have an alternate logo for economic, driving economic development in the town, and there'll be a separate website too. Is there any, uh, do we know when the website will be live? Okay, yes. perfect. <coughs> any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? That passes eight to zero to zero and is perfectly, it lands right it, on you. Uh, no, I, 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 was, I was impressed. I no, thought you not. planned that, but I think it just kind of happened. Very nice. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to move the next uh, six resolutions as one uh, mm -hmm. all, all together, and I'm going to read them off. Uh, reappointment to David Scott to Inland Wetlands, reappointment to uh, Robert Ashworth to Inland Wetlands, appointment of John Piazenza to the Board of Assessment Appeals as an alternate. Reappointment of Joseph Kane to the Shellfish Commission as an alternate. Appointment of Natalie Billings, uh, Natalie Burfoot Billings to the Community Development Advisory Committee. And uh, is that one an alternate too? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's an alternate. Uh, and then reappointment of uh, Juan Melendez Jr. to the Water Pollution Control Authority. And I will move all six of those as a group. Second. We have a motion in a couple of seconds. <laughs> Any discussion on this? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes 8 to 0 to 0. Councilor Perizzotti, you do the last one. Last one more after that. Oh, right, the second to last one. Resolution approving tentative agreement between the town and Groton Municipal Employees Association, GMEA, United Electrical Radio and Machine Workers of America, Local 222. Two, Connecticut Independent Labor Union, Local 62, for the term July 
one, 2016 through June to June 30th, 2019. Whereas the town of Groton and the Groton Municipal Employees Association United Electric Coal Radio and Machine Workers of America, Local 222 Connecticut Independent Labor Union, Local 62, reached a tentative agreement on a successor collective bargaining agreement for the period July 1st, 2016 through June 30th, 2019. And whereas the bargaining unit, you, Whereas the bargaining unit membership voted to approve the agreement, and whereas approval is recommended by the town's negotiators, now therefore be it resolved that the town of Groton, oh, I'm sorry, resolved that the Groton Town Council hereby approves the agreement and the expenditure of funds necessary to implement the agreement between the town and the Groton Municipal Employees Association, United Electrical Radio, Machine Workers of America, Local 222, Connecticut Independent Labor Union, Local 62, for the period July 1, 2016 through Ju June 2019. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Wow. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes 8 to 0 to 0. Mark. Just. Uh, must have been having a senior moment, I think, but I just want to make sure. Um, did, did you, did the council actually read the resolution concerning joint purchasing program? Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. I read it. See you this time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Pfizer's working on it. So the last one is 2017-0141, the PAR for lease renewal. And Mark, you have something written up? Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll type this up or get it typed up tomorrow, but we take a shot. Okay. Um, okay. If that's okay yeah, with yeah. you. Uh, where is the current restaurant concessionaire at the town-owned Shenacossett Golf Course has provided food, food service for the past 30 years, and where is the concessionaire Par 4 restaurant has worked cooperatively with the golf course to conduct popular golfing events? And whereas the concessionaire and the town council have successfully, um, yeah, have successfully negotiated a new five and a half year lease for the period July 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2022. Now therefore be it resolved that the town council approves the lease of premises at Chanticasa Golf Course for a term of five and a half years with the current concessionaire Anthony Christina and Peter Genacopoulos, owners of the Par 4 restaurant, and be it further resolved that the town manager is authorized to make minor modifications to the draft lease in, consult in consultation with the town attorney and the Par 4 owners, and be it further resolved that the town manager, Mark Rolfinger, is authorized to sign the lease on behalf of the town. I so move. Second. Oh, there you go. Perfect, Rich. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Great. Seeing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? That passes 8 to 0 to 0. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. We are adjourned.